Power Rangers, really? Ever feel like you've had that reaction from someone you know? It comes with the territory of being an adult toy collector of any description, but to me it's always seemed like there's slightly more of a raised eyebrow, twitch in the corner of the mouth reaction to this particular franchise. And so, after over 2 million views, now 5 years of making YouTube videos, and an ongoing lifetime of collecting, now seems like a sensible time to ask the awkward question of why is Power Rangers embarrassing, and why am I still collecting? So for me personally, Power Rangers for years has been almost like another tax that I just pay. Every year lots of new things are announced, and some of them I buy. Which doesn't sound particularly entertaining or joyful when I say it like that. But I suppose what I mean is when I'm lucky enough for Christmas or my birthday to roll around, people know that they need not ask me what Power Rangers stuff to buy because I've already bought it. Obviously it wouldn't be a surprise if I asked for something specific, and also I'd be stressing that they wouldn't have the same detail scrutiny or zeal for getting it quickly enough. Also, I'm quite numb to it now, but certainly in the beginning of buying Power Ranger toys in adulthood, well, it's just quite embarrassing, isn't it? I mean, it shouldn't be, and God bless Bandai and more recently Hasbro for making the boxes scream collector more than before. But yeah, I'd certainly feel bad kind of second person embarrassment sending someone into that situation on my behalf. I collect because it's a bit like chasing the whale of guaranteed joy. It's similar in a way to why you might want to have the same meal over and over, or why people revisit old films or holiday destinations. We're programmed to associate joy with it. We have this perceived assurance that we won't regret something that we know we already like, a big aspect to the way I collect is only buying things that I can imagine I'll still be happy to own in 10, 15, 20 years time. I learned this very early on, there's always going to be too much coming out to buy everything. When the dust settles, you really need to be happy with the pile of loot you've accumulated. You have to collect it for you and what you like, not what other people like. And honestly, if you're an adult collector of Power Rangers, you're probably halfway into that ethos mindset already. I like that it's a niche brand, I like that it's only followed by a subset of a subset of adult collectors. That in a way it's kind of alternative in toy line terms, while also being old enough to be considered historic. I'd say by now I'm unlikely to ever have a lot of cash in life, but having started so early with these, it's really nice to be rich in something and to be quite knowledgeable in something that relatively few are. And perhaps you feel the same, perhaps you struggle to put your finger on exactly what keeps you coming back, why you continue to justify making such chaotic, nonsense purchases to yourself. Power Rangers is definitely not hip, it's not fashionable, it probably was once and only very briefly at that, and yet somehow it persists, somehow it has defied the odds avoided certain cancellation and ownership changes multiple times. It has really quietly continued with this diligent output, adjusting its pace and slowing to something more manageable for its owners to keep up with, yet still enough to get a brand new TV series toy line every other year. That core element that like captured my heart back then, which was the Zords, continues to be the pivotal component of the show that I consider before anything else. Because there's just not another series exactly like this, where you get combining Zords into Megazords into Ultra Zords. But Power Rangers is embarrassing because no one quite knows what to make of it. Is it a campy superhero show that takes itself too seriously? Is it a tongue-in-cheek meta-parody of itself and its own elaborate construction? Is it a metaphor for achieving world peace and equality or something? There's so many different readings you can make of the show, and more and more as showrunners change and bring in new ideas. Because the show has managed to continue over multiple decades, I have found that it's tended to reflect where I was in life at the time. So in Space Hit, when I needed something more serialised and expansive, Ninja Storm had that snarky, modern self-awareness. Dino Thunder brought back my childhood favourite to be a Power Ranger again. RPM satirised itself, the series, and lots of famous sci-fi properties while it was at it. And Super Megaforce, well okay, actually Gokaija, made me appreciate the suits again. 
The pirate theme gave it all such a crazy attitude, and the Zords were, as we know, legendary. So somehow, going against logic, I'm still here. And there's something comforting about Power Rangers being this constant that's always been there. Most things in life that you like either go away or change beyond recognition. And luckily, that hasn't happened with Power Rangers. It still might, especially if they're really trying to engage a new audience with this new universe idea. But I suppose the risk there is that it loses what makes it so distinct and becomes so generic it crashes and burns like the 2017 movie. Don't get me wrong, there was definitely some stuff in there to like, but there was also almost an embarrassment, a reluctance on the part of the producers to embrace the visuals and iconography of what makes Power Rangers Power Rangers. They didn't show a Morpha or a standard Morph sequence, they didn't show the Zords coming together, they didn't even show the heroes getting their Power Ranger suits until the movie was nearly over. What I'm finding in life is that the majority of people out there have an unnecessary spending vice. Lots of people have multiple. The consumerization of nostalgia is colossal and we see it across multiple lines. Lego being a good example lately, which somehow manages to be both accepted and alternatively cool. I think there's kind of an appreciation for Lego as an art form, and I do wish Power Rangers could command that kind of appreciation for their Megazord designs. You might end up commenting on that, that well Transformers manages it. To be honest, I don't keep up with Transformers and never really hear about it, which through the mirror must be Transformers fans' perception of Power Rangers. What does manage to break through and be louder then? Well, Marvel and Star Wars, Hasbro's other major toy properties, also seem to have a large legion of adult supporters without it seeming embarrassing. I guess it's mostly story and possibly the cast that makes it work for them. A big problem for Power Rangers for the majority of its show life is that it functions predominantly as a kids show and the audience that's interested in that has decreased over time and so the show has had to adapt and make itself younger as well. I think it's very interesting, probably the most exciting thing in years, to see what happens with this new universe idea. If the franchise can both balance all aspects that make it unique while appealing to an older audience. It definitely helped me years ago through the web when I realised that I wasn't the only weirdo out there who still thought Power Rangers were kind of awesome. And for that I definitely have to thank most of all Ranger Board, MMPR Toys, Dosen Rider and Hassan Ahmed. I only found their channels back in 2013, I know they've all been going a lot longer than that, but I remember their collective it is what it is attitude to collecting was refreshing and reassuring. And I do hope that I, in these five years so far, have been able to project that kind of thinking on for others out there. Because it matters and you do need to see it. I guess I knew Power Rangers was the one for me, embarrassing notwithstanding, when I just couldn't shake it off. I've spoken about it time and again in a lot of my Zord reviews. I kept trying to grow out of it because I knew that was what was expected of me. But something just kept seeming awesome about it, usually new takes on Megazords. And it's hard to cut something loose when you genuinely like it. Obviously there's an argument that you shouldn't have to. This hadn't happened with me with other franchises that I'd collected previously when growing up. Those I'd just been happy to set aside and leave them where they were in the past. But Power Rangers managed to overcome me trying to cut it out multiple times. I don't really know what the magic recipe is for how it did it or for how much longer it'll last. But for now at least, I'm a fan. So guys, I hope that was useful to you as it been the five years so far and wherever we go next with more retro and new stuff reviews. Let me know in the comments, why do you think Power Rangers is embarrassing and yet somehow still appealing? And whether you can think of anything else that they could do that could change the feel and direction of the franchise while not changing it beyond recognition. Thanks again for sticking with me, for being a subscriber if you are already, and until the next time, see you later.